Throughout the history of Stand in the Gap Radio and TV, we've regularly emphasized the importance of building into our children and grandchildren a true biblical worldview through a Christian education. And Isaac and I and our entire ministry have encouraged parents and grandparents alike to model genuine Christian living as an essential part of their lives. And to that end, we've devoted numerous programs to various aspects of this subject. We've highlighted the historic post-COVID growth in homeschooling as an example in brick and mortar Christian schooling. We've talked about the why and the what of a genuine Christian education and how it's outworking should be evidence in the lives of children and ultimately throughout our culture. We've talked about the enemies of Christian education and the opposing philosophies designed to undercut the necessity of a Christian education. We've shared in detail how and why true Christian education is essential for God's blessing individually and nationally. And Isaac and I could both give testimony to the value of Christian education in our respective lives and in those of our children. Now, during my 68 years of life thus far, my involvement in education has moved a long way. I attended a smaller country public school in Ohio. I attended a Christian university in South Carolina. I engaged in post-college, participated in many secular business-related continuing education courses in multiple states. In the early 80s, I became involved in Pennsylvania as a board member in my church in its brick and mortar Christian school. Then it further deepened when my wife, uh, Ruth Ann, and I decided to begin homeschooling our children in the early 1990s. It further broadened when I served in the Pennsylvania General Assembly on the House Education Committee for 16 years and chaired the subcommittee on basic education for many of those years and where I was extensively involved in writing and getting past some major pieces of educational legislation. But it was more recently when the concept of worldview began to emerge as a matter of commentary within the phrase Christian, and that used that word Christian worldview. I, I felt uncomfortable in some cases with that rather loose usage of the phrase Christian worldview, since frankly, many at that time, there were already so many defin uh, definitions of what it meant to be Christian. So I began to use exclusively on our Stand in the Gap programs the phrase biblical worldview. Now that phrase is pretty much the dominant reference. So for today's program, Isaac and I'll focus on the necessary components of true Christian education and approach the subject a little differently. The title for today's program and next week in part two is Christian Education, the Essential Components. Now in the course of these two programs, we'll identify, explain, and illustrate the essential components, including the definitions of education, the differences between Christian and secular education. And along with our special guest, Dr. Renton Rathbun, Director of the Center for Biblical Worldview at Bob Jones University, and regular speaker for Biblical Worldview Instruction for BJU Press, will define and illustrate Biblical Worldview. And then next week in part two, we'll describe the state of Christian education in America, and define and describe what's required for a school curriculum to be truly Christian and what it takes to have an integrated biblical worldview throughout using the model of BJU Press, who is the leader today in biblical worldview integrated curriculum. And with that, let me welcome to the program our special guest today, Dr. Renton Rathbun. Renton, thanks for being with Isaac and me today. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to it. Well, we are too. And you and I did a, uh, t a radio program on, on this subject, but this is going to be a little bit different today because we can see each other and we don't see each other on radio. But uh, let me get right into it. We'll find out more about you and people will come to know you through the process of these two programs. But let's start out here with definitions. Uh, could you give a succinct definition of education and then Christian education. Lay the foundation for us as we begin today's program. Absolutely. Um, I would say that a, generally education is the basic teaching and practicing the skill of interpreting the world for the purpose of fundamentally grounding the learner in reality, which I think is the most important part of education today. Now, a Christian education um, 
uses what we understand reality to be as God's word. So it takes God's word as the authority to interpret God's world in order to align with God's explanation of his world. And that's how we learn as Christians. All right, and that was so good. I want you to take and rephrase exactly what you said in the end. Christian education is taking God's word to explain. Go ahead and say that again. I think that was very excellent. Absolutely. In Christian education, we want to take God's word as the authority of reality itself so that we can interpret God's world. This is his world. And so as we interpret God's world, we, we begin to learn how to align our understanding with God's already interpreted world, which is his explanation that we find in God's word. All right. Excellent. Excellent. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're just tuning in, uh, we're speaking today on Christian education, the essential components. Our special guest is Dr. Renton Rathbun. We laid out the definition. Uh, we'll be back in just a moment as we can further break out the, all the essential elements, and we get into interpreting and defining biblical worldview succinctly. We'll be right back. Truth, flexible or permanent? The Bible, ancient history or powerfully relevant? Culture, a reflection of enlightenment or warning signs. The pastor, commentator, or frontline combatant. Every day, American Pastors Network speaks to these questions where and when they matter. With hundreds of affiliate radio stations nationwide, a website and mobile app screening today's headlines through the twin lenses of the Bible and the Constitution, educating, informing, equipping. This is the American Pastors Network. The time is now to stand in the gap for truth. Welcome back to Stand in the Gap, and our guest today is Dr. Renton Rathbun, the director of the Center for Biblical Worldview at Bob Jones University. And Renton, thanks so much. Um, I really appreciate those, those succinct definitions you gave us starting out about just what is education in, in interpreting the world. Uh, I've been a public school educator, and so I, you know, I know what you're talking about. You're trying to get kids to just wake up and learn about things and you know, start to inter interact and function, be able to tell time or count numbers, read. Uh, but as someone who I grew up in a Christian school, we teach our kids, we use BJU Press uh, at, with homeschooling with our children. Uh, the, the importance of Christian education. And I hope that those who are watching us today, that it doesn't scare you away seeing the titles about Christian education uh, if you don't have children that are school age or something like that. Because uh, Rent, what I'd like to talk about is really these essential components you just described. You know, it's about how we, we see God's world, interpret it through God's word. And that applies for all of us. Uh, our good friend, Dr. George Barna, just, just uh, published a book, his 60th book, about raising spiritual champions and the, the importance that we in the church have for helping support parents to be able to do that. You know, and it, it all goes back to how we see the world, how we interpret these things. So could you kind of break out what are the essential components um, that Christian education needs to really truly make it a Christian education? Absolutely. I mean, these... This is something I think a lot of us have lost even in the, the world of the church. Um, and I would say the first most important component is the parents. Um, we have, we need to go back to God's word and understand who God put at the, at the forefront of children's education, which is the parents. I think the second part would be the learner. Um, the parents know their children and know how they learn uh, best, and then how do we how do we cultivate a education around that learner? And then the teacher, who's that teacher going to be? Uh, is a teacher a good match for that learner? And then of course the curriculum is the curriculum really centered around God's word, or does the curriculum claim it and it doesn't do it? Or are we trying to use secular curriculum to try and teach our children? And then lastly. Uh, the medium. How do we get to the child? Is it is it through homeschooling? Is it through Christian schooling? I think those are the components that we really need to think about. 
Hmm. And th those are important. I mean, it, it makes sense once you start naming them off, but it makes sense for us to understand that and that the children understand it and our Christian ministries that we're focused on that uh, so we know what we're aiming for, we know what we're attempting to do. Because so many times people get frustrated and they maybe say, oh, well, Christian education didn't work for me, but maybe they didn't have all those components together in the way that worked best for their children, for their family, uh, and their ministry. And so as you, you know, deal so much with biblical worldview, that is, I mean, that's your job title uh, there at the, the, the Center for Biblical Worldview at, at Bob Jones. Um, you have you know, really gotten into this, you've dug on into this, and we talk about it in our program, our media, uh, regularly at just about every program that we do. We, we talk about having that biblical worldview, that lens that we're looking through to, to understand the world. Um, but could you teach us, you know, kind of an apologetics uh, of, of biblical worldview and, and how that fits into a Christian education? Well, absolutely. Um, you know, we, we sometimes think that the Bible is another category or another subject. I think if we called Bible um, reality, uh, people would see it differently. And so what God's Word says is the reality of education today, especially a biblical worldview of it, is that Deuteronomy 6 tells us it's the parent's responsibility to train up a child. Um, and even Proverbs 22, 6 says that training up a child the way it should go um, is, is at the paramount uh, view of the, of the parent. But if they're going to do that, they need to know that I need a process that will be able to help my child see reality as God has told us to see it. And that is where a biblical worldview begins, that we look at God's word as the way of interpreting as a, as a world that has been pre-interpreted for us. Mm -hmm. Okay, Renton, let me come back in, because I want you to, I want you to define, I mean, again, I, I just want to make sure that those who are watching us, we don't jump over anything, because some may not. So I'm going to want you to inter uh, define worldview, and then specifically biblical world. Build that out. But I wanted to go back to the question that Isaac asked you a little bit ago. You mentioned some of the components of education. You mentioned curriculum, you mentioned you got to have a student, obviously. Uh, you have a teacher, you got to have a teacher in the process. Um, you parents, okay, you have no children without parents, so you have parents. But into that process now we have church, we have school generally, which as a teacher, but a lot more than teacher. So I'd like you to take in, if you could, establish some order of priority within those components. Now you make them back and say, well, frankly, they're all important. Well, they, right. they all are, otherwise you wouldn't have mentioned them. But uh, could, you, could you perhaps establish some order, biblical order, uh, from God's perspective of where and how those align in importance, particularly for a parent who's considering, am I going to give my child a Christian education? If not, all right, how do I do it? Could you do that, please? Absolutely. I mean, as Americans, we tend to think of order in terms of skill level. So maybe, you know, the school itself might be at the top because it has the most skills. You have people there that have been trained, all that sort of thing. But biblically, we think in terms of authority. And so, hmm. you know, the church has authority over the parents because the parents are members of a church. The church then has elders or deacons that sway authority over those parents. And then those parents have authority over the children. And the children then need to be able to see how the world is, is understood through that authority structure. And so at the top, I would even say parents are at the top because they represent the church in its authority to their, to their children. I think the, children, the, the learner comes next because we need to be able to start thinking about the learner differently. I think sometimes there's good Christian schools out there, but a lot of times schools view children um, all the same in a flat line view. Um, and so the process becomes the same for everybody. And we really need to rethink that and really taking a look at the learner second 
is, I think, very important so that we know what kind of teaching they need, which I think the teacher would then come next. Is it going to be a parent? Is it going to be you know, someone from a school? And then the curriculum, I think, is next after that, because that curriculum becomes very important as to how that teacher is going to express the worldview to the child. And then, of course, we need to think, you know, if the curriculum is at a certain level, you know, what kind of teacher we need? Is that is the homeschool going to be the best medium for them? Is a Christian school going to be the best medium? I think that comes uh, right at the end there. Okay, so what you're laying out is obviously um, a process that requires a great deal of wisdom. Mm -hmm. Uh, But again, we're not going to go into full detail, but the Word of God provides us wisdom. That's why we are to pray when we lack, James says, and we do lack, so we pray for wisdom. But the instruction you laid out, the authority under what God has laid out, I thought was really very, very important. It's often missed by parents and uh, grandparents. So with that, let's just go move into the next year because of uh, time-wise in the program. Worldview, you've mentioned it, we've mentioned it, again, to make sure we're all on the same page. Worldview, what is it? And then biblical worldview, compare, contrast, and define, and then illustrate biblical worldview. Gotcha. Absolutely. So, worldview in a very simple, simple way, we can think of it as my beliefs, values, and assumptions that work to help me interpret the world. Um, typically, that's the, that's the way people view biblical world, or worldview itself. But if we think of it this way, um, we, we might need to add something to that definition, because we don't just have beliefs, values, and assumptions. They come from somewhere. And uh, I believe they come from a story that's running through our head. There's a story that gives us context that helps us have beliefs, values, and assumptions that then give us the way we interpret the world. With that in mind, um, we need to think about what story we go by. And I believe a biblical worldview begins with God's story um, that is laid out in God's Word. So a biblical worldview is God's explanation of God's world through God's Word for God's image bearers. Let me say that again. Uh, There's a a lot of prepositions involved. But a biblical worldview is God's explanation of God's world. This is his world. And we know this through his word. And his word was made for his image bearers, us. And with that in mind, biblical authority, you know, is that is that battleground we we are on. So if I want to to help my children see the reality of God's Word being the interpreter of this world, I need to constantly take facts that I'm teaching them and show how they are accounted for in God's Word. And so we're not just giving them brute facts in their, in their education, we're actually teaching them how to think better by showing them how these facts are accounted for in God's Word And then they begin to start thinking that way and to start interpreting the world that way. All right, Renton, let me ask you a question here. Just make a further application. People are listening and they're saying, all right, uh, they may not have heard exactly what you just said so clearly. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. It's perfect. Um, when When a child or a student is learning basic things, now, learning theology, Bible, you'd say, absolutely, it makes sense. But some would say, well, I'm just learning numbers, math, or science. I don't see the connection. So would you tie into that biblical worldview into, for instance, how does it connect to uh, math or Mm -hmm. something that appears rather neutral? Yes. So when we look at mathematics, Uh, we tend to think of just straight facts, and facts in a way that we call them maybe neutral facts. These are just the same for everybody. But the problem is that for years upon years, we still have not defined what a number is. We are asking young people to begin the process of understanding number sense without ever defining what a number is in the first place. And what Scripture does is it accounts for how numbers are possible and what they're for. 
And so when we think about what a number is, we can think about how Adam was able to name uh, creational things like, like the animals and things like that. And we find that naming things actually is a way of grasping concepts. And so numbers becomes a way of naming in a, in a numerical way or by quantity in order to understand concepts as a way of image bearing before God and being able to carry on his command for us to multiply and to, um, I didn't mean that in a, in a pun way, but to multiply and subdue and rule over the earth, which takes particular skills to obey God's commands, which finds its root right there in Genesis. Hmm. So, and that takes us right up the break. Ladies and gentlemen, education, worldview, goes with a direction. A biblical worldview takes what we learn and brings us, should bring us, to the point of understanding who God is, better revealing what He has shared in His Word, all the things that we're just talking about. Stay with us. We'll be right back for the conclusion of the program. Stand in the Gap is produced and recorded in the studios of Lighthouse TV. Positively different. Watch Lighthouse TV wherever you go. Available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, and Apple TV. You can view our in-house studio productions on demand. Or watch what's on the station right now with our 24-7 live stream. Search Lighthouse TV online on your streaming device. Or go to our website, lighthousetv.org, for more information. Lighthouse TV. Positively different. Welcome back to Staying in the Gap. And, and as we wrap this up, we've been talking about what the definition of biblical education is and really digging into the components of it. And I want to ask our special guest, Dr. Renton Rathman, if, if and just in closing, could you make a case for why uh, Christian parents need to make sure, not just that their kids go to a school that says Christian in the name or that they homeschool, but that they are making certain that the education their children are receiving, that it is truly, genuinely a Christian education. Mm, absolutely, and I will do it as, with, with this quick statement. We live in a world where uh, reality is at, is at stake, where people are able to say whatever they want about reality, and f if it's politically correct, they get to say it. But we need to understand that we need to guide our students, our children, towards the true reality of God's Word and it comes down to this. If God's word is just one of many authorities that we have to interpret human knowledge, then a Christian education is just a luxury. But if God's word is the ultimate authority for all human knowledge, then a Christian education is an absolute necessity. And that is perfectly well said. And you know, Renton, um, as we've talked about on this program, and you and I talked about it before, you, you all the way through this program today, and in next week in part two, when we come back and we talk about the state of Christian education in America, and what the goals and the outcomes ought to be, and, and you talk a little bit more about curriculum, and everything that you've said, and everything that we say, is that it all goes back to the authority of God's Word. That's right. God, God's Word, it interprets God, reality, and, and I just want to rephrase what you said is so perfectly correct. If God, if God is real, and He is, and His Word is true, and we say it is, if, there, if it is, how can we define this world and be real and reality without it? Mm -hmm. And what mm -hmm. we're subjected to, ladies and gentlemen, and with this rent, I'm going to thank you for being with us. Um, we want to have you back next week, so ladies and gentlemen, mm -hmm. stay with us. Uh, if, next week we'll be back with Renton, but let's like conclude the program this way. Christian education is not a luxury. It is essential if you are a Christian parent and a Christian grandparent who, like I am, we want our children to understand who God is, reality, truth, but there is no truth outside the authority of God's Word. 
There is no reality without the reality, the truth of God's Word. It's, if it, you boil it all down, Christian education is all about God and the authority of Scripture. That's why it's so important and we're spending this week and next week on this topic. Well, we want to thank you for watching us this week. Uh, if you've contacted us before, thank you. And I've been hearing from people all over the country. What a blessing. If you've never written to us, Isaac and I, drop us a note. Uh, pray for us. Um, partner with us in financing so that this can continue around the world.